how's it going and welcome to someone who isn't me episode number 31 my guests on this one are poppy and titanic sinclair and for those of you that don't know poppy is a very modern artist born of the internet now, her videos that first appeared on YouTube um, as collaborations with Titanic several years ago are in the multiple millions of views and are a constant source of entertainment, confusion and worry for a wide array of people. Her albums have seen her collaborate with the artists such as Grimes and Diplo and Fever 333 among others and they've transitioned from artful left field pop to equally artful heavy music that leaps from crushing riffs and industrial noise to soaring Beach Boys-esque pop in a heartbeat. I've been supporting her on my show and invited her to play my stage at Reading and Leeds Festival and in that time I feel like I've had a peek behind the curtain somewhat to see that this projected persona of monotone detachment is all a part of the art that is everything that they do. This has caused some people to cry out that she's some kind of, I don't know, mind-controlled pawn for the Illuminati or a marionette under control of Titanic Sinclair and the nefarious machinations of the MKUltra program, which, quite frankly, if, if I'm honest, it was one of the reasons why I was so drawn in because I am a huge conspiracy nerd and I read a lot about the occult and secret programs because I find it all fascinating and ludicrous and terrifying and mind-boggling all at the same time. But once you've met them and the guard is down, you see that this is all art. It's all shtick. And they're playing that game very well. Anyways, we recorded this when they were over recently for London Fashion Week. Um, We got to hang out a little and get into it somewhat. So this is Swim. Episode 31, Poppy and Titanic Sinclair, two for one special. You are welcome. Anyway, right then, shall we? Yes. Thank you for doing this first and foremost. Well, thank you for having me on. I've wanted wanted to do this for quite a while, ever since I first started seeing the videos, Mm. just because I was so intrigued. And now um, it seems like our worlds have kind of moved towards each other now, so it it feels about right yeah in a funny way as well because you know casey and jesse mm-hmm. uh draxler so yeah that's multiple weird. fronts yeah i hit him up actually about um we'll have to work out the timeline on this actually so when we talk about certain things if you don't want it to be common knowledge before okay. the record comes out or i think i think it's pretty fair game at this point okay great yeah, because I, so I saw the artwork. Mm-hmm. Oh, did um, Joey send? At Reading. Yeah. yeah. He just showed me on his phone, but mm. um, it looks amazing. Thank you. Yeah, Jesse did all of that, and he took the photos as well. Um, I actually had the flu worse than I've ever had that day, and I couldn't even stand up straight or open my eyes, so in between each camera click, I was closing my eyes. <laughs> oh. But yeah, it looks amazing. Thank He's you. He's incredible as well. Yeah, he's wonderful. Uh, Titanic actually worked with him maybe 10 years ago, and um, they did something together, so it was really funny that it all came back around. Huh, nice. So you're here for Fashion Week, right? Yep. And How's that? some photo shoots. <clears throat> uh, good, hectic. The hotel room looks like fashion threw up. Yeah. But it's fun for me. This is like my fifth Fashion Week. Okay. How do you find those two worlds within music and and fashion? Because there's a lot of overlap. Yeah, there's a lot of crossover that happens. Um, For me, it's just all fun and games because I get to play dress up all the time and I get to wear crazy things and they're really expensive. (laughs) Who, like, have you been, um, are you just watching shows or are are you taking part in any? I'm just watching this time. Yeah, it's like ready to wear right now. Uh-huh. So some more accessible items. Because I was at Paris Couture this past time. And those that? are, that is a whole different yeah. situation. Um, I went to Victor and Rolf, which is one of my favorite shows. They always have amazing things. I wore... The go to hell dress in the scary mask video. That's from them. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah. And uh, they're my favorite. <laughs> cool. Do you think um, it feels like you've been embraced by that world as well? Oh, I hope. 
Uh, it feels nice. It feels like it's a natural thing. Yeah, I I like the fact that it seems that with with everything you're doing that you, that those because of your interest in both those worlds that that's getting brought in mm -hmm. because I feel like you know back in the day oh, that's such a terrible saying anyway <laughs> but when when rock stars existed because I feel that they're something of a dying breed mm. and, I, and I think that there's definitely like a vacuum that needs filling and I feel like those worlds were so so intertwined like with people like Bowie and it seems like the glamour has been lost in a way. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree with that, definitely. Yeah. Bowie is a huge inspiration to me and influence. And it seems like with the current landscape of music in all different genres, it seems like everybody's trying to be very relatable. Hmm. It's almost like a race to be the most relatable person. And... What attracts me to people like David Bowie and Bjork is they are their art. David Bowie, his death was his art, you know. Yeah, well, this is something I actually wanted to get to a bit later, but this is, is, um, is what is art as the nature of it and can people be art? And I think you've just sort of touched on that. Yeah, I think people can be art. I, I think... You can't just be one thing anymore. You have to be everything. You have to be the visionary and the musician and the songwriter and the stylist and everything, hmm. I think. It's important because if you aren't, somebody else will. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I feel there's a, like a vacuum that need that people are sort of stepping into that role. I think Manson is clearly the um, best example in the last sort of twenty years of somebody of that's last. done that, and and Bjork of uh, yeah, and uh, and there's people coming through. I think Aurora is is definitely within that realm as well, <laughs> um, within in pop. Um, but yeah, I, I just feel like I I kind of worry a bit, and I don't know if that's just me being old. <laughs> You know, because I feel that those things are really vital. And if you're going to make, I miss the art in pop, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what one of the things why I think what you guys are doing is so great, because it Thank feels you. like that's such an intrinsic part of, of what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so Warholy and it's 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 perfect, I think. Thank you. Yeah, he's also a very huge inspiration to both Titanic and I, Andy Warhol. Um, yeah, I do think it seems a bit dead right now. Yeah. The one thing I think that's so amazing is that from a magical perspective, and this is me going off on my thing, but you don't have to agree. But I think that um, one of the reasons that hip-hop has become so dominant is that it's almost like... Uh, it's so aspirational in its in the, what it projects. It's so forceful in projection of will. Mm -hmm. Like even when people don't have money, they'll take all the money they do have out of the mm -hmm. bank just so they can walk around right. with it, so people can see them holding it. The extravagance. And it's, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's and it's it's like will to power. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. I think, and it's just so, and it's infectious as well. Because yeah. the aspirational nature of it is people want to be that as well. People that aren't in the industry, people that aren't artists. Mm. And I think that's why they buy into it so much. I mean, it's, it's, it's the pinnacle of advertising, isn't it? Yes, I definitely agree. Huh. Yeah. The extravagance is attractive, I think, to most people, including mm. myself. But I think there's ways to do it as opposed to emptying your bank account. <laughs> Yeah, and, you can uh, be artful with it. Right, yeah. And I think there are artists that are doing that. Mm -hmm. Kendrick, I think, is, is, a, is an incredible example of that. Yeah. And, and, and yay. Mm -hmm. Even though... I was just listening to Jesus yesterday. Yeah. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. Yeah, it's incredible. And um, I wonder how much of what is going on, like this whole kind of tornado that is around him right now, how much of it is... 
um, manipulation on his part, mm. like perceptual manipulation. I think he's very intelligent. He knows exactly what he's doing. I think it's funny that people get so upset um, when he speaks out about certain things because mm. he knows that it will cause a reaction, and it does every time. Yeah, it's casting, casting a line, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And just reeling people in. You're just but poking I, people. Yeah. But it's a dangerous game as well, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But I think his following is so loyal that he must get bored at times and think, well, let's see if I can do this and if people will still come to my shows. And I think the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure how much of the breakdowns are real. And, like, I obviously sympathize with anyone that, that, that has those struggles because mm-hmm. I think it's something that everybody deals with. We all do. But, um, but yeah... I I wonder how much of it is manipulation. And I think... um, See, this is interesting because I think there's such a parallel Mm. between that and what you're doing. Thank you. Yes. (laughs) I'm glad you took that as a... (laughs) as a compliment because I did mean it as one but uh, yes. but some other people could be like oh cool you've just talked about spoken about somebody having breakdowns and <laughs> and manipulation I hope and, I have a breakdown as valuable as Kanye West yeah right mm-hmm. well played um but he's married to also as much um hate that she gets Kim Kardashian she's like well, the Kardashian family is like America's royal family. Yeah. And much to the chagrin of the Trumps, I think. Yeah, talk about media mastery. It's mm. exactly that. And when you put the two together, it's just world domination. That's what that is. <laughs> Do you think there was an element of that involved? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think there's a lot of money that gets passed around. Hmm. But it's Hollywood and it's all fun and games. Yeah. <laughs> Until someone gets hurt, as the saying goes. Mm -hmm. So this is... um, Oh, we can get into all this now. (laughs) So, as I said, the parallel between what you're doing and things like that. It is high art, I think. Mm. And I I think that that seems to have been the... um, Like the goal from the outset with this, Mm. right? Would you agree or am I getting... Am I on the wrong track? Oh, no, I, I would definitely agree. Um, when we first started the project, Titanic and I together, um, we just wanted to make things that our friends would enjoy. Hmm. And then it evolved over time and turned into what it is today. But on that course, we got to actually witness a side of Hollywood that you only hear about. And then we became in the center of it and witnessing these things. And I think our art has changed over time because it's a crazy thing to experience and to absorb in a way some things that are around you that are moving so fast and then to channel that into the art whether it be positive or negative things that you've experienced um i think hollywood is a very dark place but also very fascinating yeah and if you can look at it from more of an analytical standpoint as opposed to this big bad scary monster that can eat people which it does every day yeah um but then you can have fun yeah music is the same though Mm mm-hmm I think I think that that yeah, I yeah. find Hollywood is 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 such um, it's like this archetypal realm almost. You know what I mean? Mm. That um, that it is that place that everyone travels to because it's like like a magnet. Mm-hmm. Because that's where they're gonna make their dreams come true, and it's it's and there's so many crushed people there. Yeah, I think a lot of people move there with the wrong idea. I think it's bad to put your roots down in a place that there's there's that much risk and that much um well yeah i would just say that much risk i think it's 
kind of a bad idea to use that as a starting point. I think you should probably try and build something yourself or in your hometown or wherever mm. and then make the move. I think the people that get the most crushed are the ones that try to start from ground zero and build there. And I think because everything moves so fast and you're getting influenced by everything, everything yeah. at once, um, it can cause you to go insane for sure. Yeah. I think that's one of the things I like about the city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because... Uh, for me, I mean, I, I spoke, you know, I'd actually spoken about possibly moving out there at one point. Um, but the reason I love it so much is because I'm only ever there for a brief period of time. And it's like this voyeuristic look into a world that mm -hmm. that for somebody that grew up in a tiny little town on the other side of the world, to see that is, um, I love to look in on it almost. This makes me sound like a, such a creep, mm -mm. which is fine. That, uh, you know, you get to experience it voyeuristically, but it's also like I'm fully aware that there's the veil as well that mm -hmm. you can, if you can see past that, it makes it even more interesting, but at the same time, so gross. Yeah. I think you just have to be aware of the fire that you're playing with mm. out there. Um, but I weirdly enjoy all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful to be honest. Hmm. And the the edge that it will drive certain people to, some of them will jump off and some of them will just look over the edge. Yeah. And be like I could go down there. Yeah, that's the corner of the void, gonna. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. So the thing that I find is one of the main things that drew me to all of this is that um like i love reading about esoteric things and like i'm a total conspiracy nerd and things like going back to kanye actually is a good example like when the power video first came out and he got brambilla to do it it blew my mind because it was so perfect like it aside from it being this beautiful piece and it's like oh we won't even put the whole song in it it'll just be half the song that's all we need because the point is made and uh, I wonder if they actually did a full video. Probably not needed. I, I bet they did. Yeah. There's some producer probably who was like, well, just in case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just but in it, case he changes his yeah. mind later. Yeah, that's true. So when I saw that, because I've read so much in that world, and, I, you know, I love Crowley and Spare and all these, these people that have, have truly influenced, like people like Genesis Peoridge, who's like the, whose influence on culture and art is so vast, but it's only now that people are beginning to actually see that and accept it. And, and it's funny as well to see the, the way people struggle with it mm. because of how they've been brought up and and to view those things as evil yeah. yeah i find it so amazing so yeah when that video first came out i was literally i was like going through the checklist you know giant horus necklace when they come in and they clash swords it forms like a it forms like the you know square and compass against the background and it's like this is so perfect it's so well done and then it just got so much traffic excess on top of people going i love this song this video is cool mm -hmm. it suddenly becomes this other it enters into this other realm it's like opens a side door and walks in and there's millions of people that just then start picking over it and mm -hmm. analyzing it and i think you guys are playing that game so well but it also worries me a bit <laughs> He could take this one. Yeah, mm. um, yeah it, it worries me too. I bet. Um, that should swing in. There you go. Kind of how a minute ago talking about Hollywood and playing with fire. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's weird because uh, there's a certain degree I'm of... I'm just checking you on mic, sorry. Oh, yeah, am I, am I super loud? No, you're good. Okay. There's a certain degree of hocus pocus... 
and then there's a certain degree of where part of me uh I've known witches in real life you yeah know? and um and people who practice magic like actual you know um I think we all do as artists yeah it's just a case of recognizing that right um and so in my kind of um experience being around that and seeing uh like what just planting a seed can do you know from the first video we did the cotton candy one yeah um and then into particularly the the first music video we did for this song called low life um it was a very respectfully intentional visual experiment yeah um that there are very few things in life i think creatively that um you know are going to be huge hmm. and that was glaringly just one of them and it was like kind of the beginning of us working together at what point did you know that when when we sketched out the um like the storyboards yeah and kind of how everything fell like specifically the wide shot of the pyramid yeah um yeah there was a certain certain imagery that when we kind of like listened to the song and we kind of came up with the idea of like what would the video look like and we had just started making kind of like short films together and toying around with these ideas of like sacred geometry and a lot of these like um symbols that i think kind of like activate something in the human brain that's yeah they're archetypal yeah it's 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 undeniable and i think there's a lot of people who just kind of like slap them together and like throw them in things and they're like hey this is this is weird and art and whatever but um having actually like researched and like hmm. being i guess more respectful of uh the powers. yeah that realm <laughs> um <laughs> you know we we in that video in particular, it just kind of made sense for some reason with that music, that style of music too, kind of just like a straight pop song hmm. and just kind of being like, man, let's see what we can get away with and dabbling with kind of like the major label system and just kind of being like, let's really see what we can get away with because everything now, especially in the States or in the, the music business in the U S um, and, and entertainment in general having a punk rock kind of attitude you have to be like disguised as like a corporate guy you know yeah and um but i think that's during the heyday of of, of things in like the late 90s i think that was that was the basis of everything it seemed like there were people in jobs in the music industry well every industry but it, i i actually saw it within the music industry that were just literally walking around going I hope I don't get found out. Hope no one realizes mm. that I'm like, why am I here? Yeah. I'm just kind of winging it because I love this or, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel, I absolutely connect with that. I like, still feel that to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing when I think you enter an industry like well, just music in, in general and like the business surrounding it it's incredible how many people are terrified, first of all. Hmm. Um, terrified of um, losing their jobs, first and foremost, particularly at the labels, but terrified of um, releasing, like as an artist, releasing something that you're like proud of. Yeah, and I think too that as of recently, like as in the past year, something that I learned is confidence can be the ultimate killer period <laughs> how so it's a superpower you walk into a room and you make the room yours you can yeah. have anything you want well it's projection of will again isn't it <laughs> big time yeah and it's it's easy to i mean i've i've personally met a lot of very well-known people who are very insecure yeah and um most singers to be yeah, fair yeah big time um and i think at least in, in your case, in Poppy's case, uh, having been so close to it and like working so directly and being so directly involved and seeing what she's been through and 
has like persevered and and conquered um that sort of like i call the superpower that's like an earned thing it's it's not like yeah. um i don't think people are just born with it i think you have to learn um how to navigate uh in a sea of sharks yeah for sure mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah there's there's a lot of sharks and then there's also a lot of carrots <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Get dangled in front of your face, but hmm. yeah, they, a lot of them are bad ones. And it, I think that's um, half the trick is knowing how to say no, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, definitely. And and uh, and avoid those things. I think <clears throat> there's a lot of um, in my time, <laughs> um, in music so far. There have been a lot of other artists that I get to watch um, burn very bright and then out completely. Yeah. And when I see certain ones that are what I call first record deal syndrome, <laughs> where they think that this is it, I'm gonna made it. I'm yeah. gonna take over the world. I think you need to fall, get run over by a bus reversed over <laughs> driven over again yeah and then if you can still stand there might be a chance for you <laughs> hmm. but i think i never wanted that for myself and i think that's why i got to witness it from this chair that i'm sitting in that's not a chair that's like not judgmental not a judgmental seat, i know what you're saying yeah but an analytical seat yeah it's well it's kind of it's kind of like that whole idea of like the wizard of oz and you see behind the curtain <laughs> i was wondering when that was gonna get mentioned because oh, right. i want to talk about that a lot yeah. but carry on <laughs> yeah i mean it's uh kind of like what you what you were saying a second ago um like never really intent intending or planning on experiencing this kind of like Hollywood psychedelia that obviously anyone who moves there um, is doing it for a reason. Yeah. Um, And for, I think, a lot of people, uh, it's the same reason, obviously. And so um, I I moved there to be a director. I, I grew up playing in bands. Um, I have always loved playing music and writing and recording music, but it was never, uh, that was never the goal. Uh-huh. You know, I wanted to direct movies and, and music videos. Um, and so being around, almost exclusively being around musicians, I've been able to really see every instance of from the indie to the, like total indie to the indie record deal to the major label deal the slow burn, the immediate rise to fame, the immediate crash, all of it. Um, and, you know, having having kind of, like, experienced that um, as a fly on the wall to a yeah. certain degree, um, that's just been really perplexing and, and amazing and funny and terrifying and just... Every every kind of heightened emotion you can feel, and to a, and at a certain point, I feel once you've seen it so much, or ex- had so much such a high dose of whatever that is, um, you almost like that again is kind of like that superpower we're talking about, where it's like almost it completely destroys your ego in a certain sense, and you can actually be truthful with the art that you're making, yeah. and I think you know having i've lived there for seven years now and i it still feels brand new to me you know it still has that strange allure yeah that disneyland feeling Hmm. um and it's a it's a love-hate thing for sure but um yeah i'm not quite sure actually what what my point was there no i know no i know what you're saying i think but um it's funny that you say about the wizard of oz thing because um because that then ties back in with this whole um, 
the stuff we were talking about. I mean, it's crazy. Look at your wall. I know, it bothers right. me. <laughs> You know, there's a there's a silhouette of the Tin Man on the wall. I walked in the hotel, right? Can't escape it, right? So this is the thing. Well, no, you can't. And these things line up. Yeah, mm. they do. And and I was thinking because um, when I was trying to figure out if if we we fully get into the whole conspiracy side of things, and I'm walking across the bridge, and the main building for the British secret intelligence thing is right there as I'm crossing the bridge and I get to the hotel and I walk in and the first thing I see on the wall is a bunch of like weird marionette masks and stuff and then I come in your room and there's the tin man in silhouette and I'm just like yeah our show that we just played here a couple you, weeks back you see back, that though right yes. of course it's like, yeah. it comes knocking yeah our show that we played a couple weeks back um my solo show, there was a um, satanic gathering happening across the street, a church at the other corner, and then a place named Charlotte, which is my mannequin, at the other corner. Yeah. And I was like, mm-hmm. it was meant to be. Who yeah. did this? There it is. They knew. Yeah. yeah. It's, fu- it's fun. You see, this is the, you know, as I said earlier, and I don't want to be like I'm casting lines out to, to but... Like when I said that as all artists, um, we're involved in magic, right? Because that's what I think that's what the root of creativity is. It's mm-hmm. it's like, you know, these things that 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 come to us that when we're least expecting, you know, you say you've been up for, you've had no sleep and all of a sudden you find that you're in this really creative space. And mm-hmm. I remember talking to Manson um, a while ago and we were discussing like, when he was making um, Antichrist Superstar mm. and I was asking what his kind of mindset was and what was going on and I know a lot of the stuff that was going on clearly yeah. <laughs> but uh, he also said that um, sleep deprivation was one of the main mm. re- reasons he puts that album down to being as as special as it is and it's yeah it's just funny I'd agree with that yeah there I find there um the more sleep deprived I am, the more I will wake up with songs in my head. Hmm. It happened today, and it was like a, um, it was like a di- like a Bee Gees song. <laughs> yeah, it was like a disco. Um, I always have like voice memos. Yeah. Um, and I used to travel with like a little recording studio, but now I just, I pretty much just will write via voice memos and hmm. take it home and get on the synthesizers but um but that that seems to happen um yeah when i'm very tired (laughs) and traveling a lot and kind of the more we travel which has been pretty much constant for the past like two years um if i'm home for more than a week i go crazy i just yeah being kind of in like the normal flow of things it really kind of bothers me now um (laughs) but i think it's just always being on my toes it's just like is good for like the creative process and i've never really had write, like writer's block but in the times where i've been creatively like in a drought um it just makes me really appreciate the times where um i always imagine just like being like uh on a rooftop and after months it finally rains so i'm just like looking for every pot and pan to like gather and collect collect the rain and so i've just kind of been in that mode for like two years Hmm. because i guess the fear is that at a certain point that will go away and so i mean though yeah those moments i think arrive for everybody Mm. but um but they they always come back even though when you're in amongst it it feels like this is i've lost it it's never coming back Mm. i've always found that it does or it will manifest in another way and like I started painting again mm. and only in the last, I don't know, like I don't know, six years or so. Yeah. Your paintings are great. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> always a, uh, I'm sure always a, something more to learn or. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's super frustrating. It's like writing songs. Yeah. You know, when you think, you know, you can, you can walk away from having worked all day on something and going, yeah, this is amazing. We've mm. got like the seed of something or it's, or what those moments where things just flow so quickly mm-hmm. that time feels so immaterial mm-hmm. and, and you're so in the moment and then you can come back the next day and go, oh no, that's garbage. 
I but, usually do the, um, this is the best thing I've ever done. And then I come back tomorrow, I'm like, wow, I hate myself. I should yeah. stop yeah. everything. Yeah, but that's still a beautiful thing, though, because I think that's very pure. That, that like, you, when you're making something, you're so lost and absorbed in mm. it that it that it just it, it glows and takes over everything. Yeah. Mm. Well, the, te- the test is always the next morning. Yeah. If you can but it's remember, not flowing. The, yeah, if you can remember how the song goes. Yeah. That's always, that's how we know. We'll be like, oh, yeah, that's a keeper. Like, yeah. How, how'd that thing go yesterday? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's really interesting, actually. And music's kind of one of the only creative forms I've found where that works. Yeah. Because it's, there isn't, it's just all kind of up here, you know. Yeah, because you're shutting off and it's just happening. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. a, what do you put that down to? Um, what would I, like, describe it as? Yeah. Magic. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because, I mean, who knows where that comes a, from? Receiving a light beam from somewhere. Hmm. You know, if you're open to it, it'll come, I think. Mm-hmm. My process is different from his in some ways, but... How so? I just try to m- make something every day. He does it when he's inspired, but I do it when I'm not inspired, too. Yeah. Because um, I think then you're... you're um you're opening up to those things even when the when the because yeah those those flashes of inspiration Mm -hmm. they can hit you at any moment but i but i appreciate what you're saying because i think if you have a practice Mm -hmm. you're you're making it so that you you can switch those things on or or make them come through at the times when you really need it Mm. yeah i think my process will also drive me crazy in some ways (laughs) because i will set up scenarios in my head or in real life that cause me to react certain ways just to get to the point wow (laughs) which can be problematic at times yeah i would would argue though i mean maybe problematic but i just talking about this and kind of remembering like the process of making this new album her um her philosophy of just like always even if you're not like fully inspired making something that inspired my favorite song on the album. And every time I listen to that song, I'm thankful that she forced me <laughs> to like turn the synthesizer on. And well, yeah. let's just see if we can get something today. And I was, you know, probably just in one of my moods and, you know, just wasn't feeling inspired or whatever. And from that, somehow, hands down, my favorite song on the album was made. And it was out of frustration, out of. I don't have anything, and so it was just I'm gonna try to break my synthesizer, and I'm gonna tr- I'm gonna make the most frustrating sound I possibly can. Which song is this? Blood Money. Blood Money? Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I did hear that one. Hmm. Right. I think, I think maybe. Played, yeah, it's really abrasive, right? <laughs> like al- like almost glitchy chunks of yes. sound. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I did hear that one. That that was like literally my my philosophy was I'm going to try to break my Moog synthesizer without touching it. So, because, you know, you connect it via, like, the USB, and you can just, like, program it from there. Hmm. And so I was just trying to, yeah, just make the most rotten, indistinguishable thing ever. And, you know, it became kind of that thing where I'm just, like, going crazy and running it through pedals and all this, and she'd be like, hey, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. (laughs) You know? And we're like, all right, well, let's, like, throw, like, a nasty, like, drum beat or whatever on it and then suddenly that inspired all of these lyrics about these like frustrating things that like she had been going through and and just um by proximity you know i i had been experiencing too just that frustration of of just creativity and 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 hypocrisy hypocrisy, yeah and and just dealing with liars and just making that in the music industry (laughs) imagine that (laughs) who'd have dunk it yeah yeah but i'm really happy with that one yeah it sounded great thank you one of my favorite screams on the album Mm -hmm. in it as well i just want to loop just that only that scream Mm -hmm. (laughs) so when's the record due uh november 11th i I should know that um well i really like the number 11 because my creation date is January 1st, so, 11, 11, you 11, know, 11. and then it just keeps popping up. Oh, it really does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was, as soon as you're aware of it as well, it just, it's just constantly just. Oh, my. I was cutting out the album art 
um, because I I typed everything up and I was hand cutting it out and gluing it to a piece of construction paper. Hmm. And my X-Acto blades were number 11. I was like, there we go. Yeah. (laughs) I have a thing for threes and nines. (laughs) Ha ha. Really? Uh, mm. yeah. 319, can't avoid that one. That's, That's why I have all tr- so many triangles. Oh, mm. yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, it's weird. It's weird how numbers will, and as soon as you see them and you uh, notice them, and then it's everywhere. Every yeah. license plate in LA, every time I'm driving, 319, 910, 666. I'll see it every time I drive. Yeah. And it's but just then like, you, you could argue if we're to take a rational standpoint it's just that um you're now your subconscious is just like this is a thing and and you know we're aware that as we go through a day our daily routine we are absorbing so much Mm. information Mm. and and the hardest job your brain is doing is is actually going you don't need that you don't need that you don't need Mm. that you don't need that like I know that as I'm looking at you two, I'm probably picking up everything else within the room, right? Mm. But you don't need to think about that because we're talking. Mm. So is it that those things are there and like the rational way of looking at it is now that little thing's been, that's like a side note that's been written into the code. So you notice them because Mm. you're just constant. They've always been there and you you just didn't pick up on them. Or... It's something else. <laughs> <laughs> I would always subscribe to the latter because I find that more interesting. Right. Although the previous would definitely save me a lot of anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is that. Yeah. Well, this, I mean, this all goes back again to what we were saying about um, playing with imagery within mm. within the videos and, mm-hmm. and within the whole projection of, of, of what this is. Mm-hmm. Um, so here's my thing, right? So I love the fact that we kind of veered off after talking mm. about the whole um, video for power. But when I got sent the, um, I got sent a link to the scary mask video mm. and I did exactly the same thing. I was like, checkerboards, eyes covered, mm. you know, like the, the, the pure duality of things like the black and the white and this and this and this and the mask mm. and no, 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 no. And it's, it's perfect. So well done. Thank you. Thank you. Talk about a magic place, by the way. Where, was where that? that was filmed. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's this, it's like, a, I guess, an estate up. Um, it's in Los Angeles, just off of Sunset and Silver Lake, actually, mm-hmm. at the top of uh, at the top of one of the big hills there. And, um, yeah, it, it's owned by this woman who I'm convinced has some sort of psychic, supernatural power. We um, all do. I think she's a ghost. I talked to her. <laughs> you think she's a ghost? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. How so? Um, what was she saying? Now I want to know. It wasn't exactly about anything that she said. It was more about the feeling that I got. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Well, this is, again, this is, I mean, you know, from a scientific perspective about saying about how your brain's shutting off everything so that you just get the clear picture. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, I don't even want to go into it, but we're only using 20% of our brain. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there is... It is right. like, what is the full potential of, and I think that art t- and music ties in with that so much. And then that's why I think these using symbolism, it, as you were saying, there's like these primal things that are, that are archetypal that, that as soon as you do it, you recognize it. Even if you don't recognize it, you feel it and it mm-hmm. resonates. And, and that's why I, I said earlier that it worries me sometimes. Because I'm, I'm so, I think I'm pretty aware of that stuff. Mm. I mean, you know, as I said, walking in. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm healthily paranoid, I think, is probably mm. a, a, a way that I would like to justify it. Yeah. But I also, I'm aware that, like, you know, I, I look at, like, Vigilant Citizen. You know that website, right? Oh, they, of course you they do. Know us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is the thing. And I, and I, like, like I was saying earlier, there's a whole audience of people. And it's like, views are going through the roof. Mm. you know um and i and i find it fascinating that there that people are on a crusade for those things because it's almost like they're they're viewing all that from one perspective right Mm. um and therefore everything else is bad and there is really terrible stuff that goes on as we've said earlier Mm. Mm. but um but i don't think it's as punk yeah what a joke it's not as clear cut it's not as black and white (laughs) right 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we have to note as well that the room is full is. black and white. Yes. Yeah. Which is clocks, funny. Of course Giant it is. clock stenciled on the wall. Yeah. But with what you with were saying, I, I think that part of that... With an 11. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, if only it had been pointing to the 11. <laughs> anyway. Uh, part of that, um, which we hope to encourage as well with the project, is just asking more questions without blindly walking forward. Yeah. You know? And every time I leave my studio or my home, I'm surprised to see people, for one, but people that will believe anything or just the tasks of the day. That's that's all their purpose is, is to just, you know, rinse, lather, repeat. Hmm. And that's I, it. I, and I, I, I can't... Like, on a one hand, like, I used to be very into, um, oh, I don't even want to go. I know that doing this is literally opening myself up for all of that scrutiny now. They're going to be like... Here we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now, I've had that before already anyway, but, um, yeah, oh, I'm going to stop what I was going to say. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving them hanging. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's okay. You could be like Kanye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So this is, again, going back to the whole Wizard of Oz thing, it's so perfect that, you know, that you, that you are able to, like, look behind. Mm. And that's kind of what I was trying to allude to earlier as well. But, um, and I think that, um, like, it's such a, it feels like such an integral part of, of what this is from my perspective, again, because this is probably me reading way too much into things about the whole, um, like, in the concrete videos, obviously, like, mm. the, the poppy field is, is, it feels like buzz. yeah <laughs> yeah right oh yeah yeah um absolutely yeah poppies will put them to sleep mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but yeah and 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 when i first started thinking about doing this and i was thinking about the whole thing of you know mark saying um religion being the opium of the people right and then later franti saying that television the drug of the nation mm. and then the, then we follow that and the natural progression is now it's the internet and social media and I think, um, yeah, like poppy is like, you know, instantly makes me think of opium poppies and yeah. And yeah, <clears throat> like you. Papala Somniferum and, you know, there's a, um, when you were saying earlier, it made me think of like, uh, video killed the radio star. Hmm. And then Liam Lynch said, internet killed the video star. And so now it's like kind of the philosophy has been like, well, the, like poppy is the one that kills all the stars <laughs> yeah and because like my kind of one of my uh i don't want to say goals but one of my inspirations in like working together and when we met um you know meeting someone named poppy i was like oh well that immediately works <laughs> and that's like it's nice and it has a nice ring and i can see you know, that on a billboard kind of thing, you know, mm. um, you know, just, and then the association obviously with like the poppy and the poppy fields, the wizard of Oz, all of those kind of things together. Um, and now it's just kind of become funny and like almost like, uh, it's not ironic, but I, I just love how heavy the music's become <laughs> and having the name poppy and like people who have never like heard anything that, that we've put out before. I think it's really funny just to kind of like walk into it for the first time and hear maybe like concrete, for example, or scary mask and just be kind of almost like borderline, just, you know, like, uh, hypnotized by loud guitars and, mm. you know, how did that jump happen? Well, um, when we wrote X, well, I would, I would say Am I a Girl, actually. Really? Yeah, because we wrote a song called Am I a Girl, which was written as an acoustic, um, I would say, ballad. And then we did, like, the initial production was, like, synth wave, almost, actually, it was, like, very Depeche Mode. Hmm. Like, it, so it sounded straight off of Violator. And um, not when... A bad thing. No, no, not at all. I would have to show you the demo, actually. It's pretty cool, but when it came time to, for, for like mixing, we had always wanted to work with our friend, Zach Servini, who mm -hmm. is, uh, pr uh, produced the whole album with us and our friend, Chris Griotti. Um, and so 
we were just kind of like, let's take a stab at this and see what Zach does. And I just told him, and this is our philosophy for everything we do, whether it's music videos, if it's like a set designer or like, um, like a director of photography or anyone who's involved, even hair and makeup and stuff, we're always just like, you do what you're the best at and we trust you. And I think more than anything of all of the art that we've made, I think the art of our like community of artists is the thing I'm the most proud of. Yeah. Because being able to have so many people on a team who are really flexing their best muscles and and they're allowed to kind of be proud in what they're making together. And like my job as a director is just to kind of like just filter or almost like sculpt. I feel like I'm like sculpting almost uh, making these videos or if we're making music or something. And so that definitely happened on the video end, I think before it did on the music end. Mm. Um, but once we started working with Zach Cervini, um, and that was Am I a Girl and then X, as well as Chris Criati, um, that's when it felt like it became um, correct. To me, at least. I don't know if you feel the same way, but. Yeah, I think so. That makes sense. Yeah. How do you, how do you go about finding those people? Well, just we kinda... just go and put an ad on Craigslist and help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Just through um, living in Los Angeles and Instagram, I think. Yeah, that's well, nuts, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, definitely that's a part of it. I think I've made most of my friends on Instagram at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I've made like a like I've met a ton of artists that I've always respected and loved. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm lucky in within music because of because of what I do to to meet those people and, and hopefully become friends with them. Yeah. But um, but yeah, Instagram's unreal because I'm yeah so many artists that mm -hmm. I've always respected like painters and sculptors and stuff. Yeah. It's nuts. It's, it's a positive. It <laughs> is. Of social media, Twitter on the other hand, not so much. <laughs> yeah, that's so weird now. That's like. Um, yeah, it's it's like it needs to get vined, you know. <laughs> it needs to get vined immediately. I, l I love that as like <laughs> as an adjective. adjective. Yeah. <laughs> hey, get vined. <laughs> yeah. Do you, how do you cope with that? Which part? With things like Twitter and like because to be to be an artist that is um, that would, in a lot of the interviews, it'd be like, "Where are you from? I'm from the internet." Mm. which is fantastic for a start it's the truth <laughs> it is the truth I get it um, but also it's like how do you deal with being that person I don't run my Twitter my team runs it I used to but at what point were you like yeah I'm out the past year mm. I just thought I don't want to be a person with a Twitter account I don't want to talk to anyone I don't want to know what they have to say I just want to be in my bubble that I just keep inflating so I can't see anything else around me. Yeah. It makes another thing too is like it makes you wonder like let me think of a good example. Like I can't I can't imagine John Lennon having a Twitter. <laughs> you know? Well that's yeah. the other part as well because um I think with social media it has killed a lot of great art because instead of being angry about whatever, politics, religion, your friend made you upset. You'll just go on to Twitter, not me, but some will go on to Twitter and tweet that as opposed to channeling it into something that could be impactful to the world. Wow, you just blow my mind. I've never thought of that before. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a wasted opportunity. That's so true. Mm-hmm. Huh. And even when people do, it doesn't get to live in its own space properly because it's everybody has the opportunity to go that's shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I, th I th one one thing that we huh, I never thought of that. We'll very often say something in a conversation, and one of us will be like, "Oh, that's a great tweet." And recently. <laughs> That has become that, but we'll, we'll stop ourselves. We're like, no, that's a great lyric. Yeah. And then it becomes a song lyric instead, as opposed to you know a tweet that just 
goes into the ether of nothingness. And then I'm clever for a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they recognize me for a second. Yeah. Yeah. That's so crazy because it's such the like going back to the the thing with Warhol, it's like he was so right and so wrong mm. at the same time. Mm-hmm. It's like because it's like it's like the attention span has whittled that fifteen minutes down to like fifteen just, characters. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. It's How crazy. Many characters, a hundred and something. One forty-four. Yeah. Right. Oh, and it's not anymore, is it? Oh uh, yeah, it's like one seventy now. Mm. I don't huh. like that number. <laughs> one hundred seventy. Yeah, it's difficult to say. One hundred and seventy. I was thinking about the whole. Um, I don't want to say shtick because it so undersells it. So I wish I hadn't even said that. Um, But the whole thing about AI, Mm. of of this almost like a projection of the persona as as that. Um, And then I started, again, overthinking everything, uh, as is often my case. And, (laughs) and And then actually started looking it up about what the actual words could mean mm. and about artificial being like made and produced by people rather than nature and then but also meaning something that's insincere and affected mm. or contrived mm. um and then it coming from artifice which is like clever and cunning used to trick and deceive people which comes from latin mm. which is art um from ours for art and for seer to make so it's to make art <laughs> it's that. Long story short. Yeah, right? <laughs> but it's so crazy when you start to look into things and it's like, oh, no, yeah, that's, that's right. Mm. Like it sums it all up. I like that. We should yeah. make a graph. Yeah, graph. like a flow chart. flow chart. I actually do that a lot, <laughs> <laughs> which is crazy. There's, uh, for anyone listening, I would, I would say uh, the, any of Ray Kurzweil's books are... I would highly recommend The Age of Spiritual Machines. That has inf- inspired and influenced so much of what we do. Um, do you not find him creepy, though? Isn't everybody huh? creepy? Though? Well, yeah. Oh, 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 do I find him creepy? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. His whole reason... <laughs> the vitamin thing? Like... Well, there's that, but the whole reason for, for pushing for AI is, you know, the reason is because of his so father, his dad, right? yeah. Yeah. Pretty, just, pretty bizarre. I mean... I mean, that's like the ultimate daddy issue pushing yeah. society forward, right? It's amazing. Yeah. Like the Kurzweil kind of like the daddy issues thing. Like I can definitely see like... That's so undercutting. It's all his work, <laughs> isn't it? It's just daddy issues. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, like literally like Sorry, invented mate. like one of the most amazing like synthesizers ever. And like, yeah, and, and among other things. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't remember why actually I brought that up. Um, the what, the do books. You, what do you think... Uh, what do you think is going to be the end of it? Like, where does that end with with AI? Because I started reading like some Nick Bostrom stuff, mm. and which is really heavy going, to be fair. But yeah. um, but there's certain things that I read that that really gave me hope because everybody's like, ah, oh, it's going to be like Terminator. Skynet's going to no. become self aware, and then we're all I done. I don't subscribe to that. No, no, not at all. No, 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 no. So I... you're a utopian AI guy. I'm a bit more dystopian, I think. Oh, I'm definitely dystopian. I just, <laughs> they're not going to be like, I don't, I don't think it's going to be like a humanoid thing. I, th- I think whatever is going to happen, we will not see it coming. Hmm. It's just, yeah. Was, was it Elon Musk that said we're summoning a demon? I believe. It was just so great. It's like, and, yeah. And the, I, I, would, I would argue... I kind of demons aren't great, by the way. I just want to clarify yes. that because I know now that people are going to listen to this of a yes. certain disposition. Absolutely, I I, I do tend <laughs> to agree with the idea that if there is a simulation, it's already happening. Oh yeah, like and so that kind which of which is us noticing everything. Yeah, like we were saying earlier, the glitches in the matrix. Yeah. It sounds like such a cliche, but it's so true. And as yeah. soon as you become aware of them, of synchronicity, and, and it's just like, there's, they just start speeding up and speeding up. Yeah. I found, but that oh. might be because I'm going mental. Just surrender to it. Yeah. Well, there's, yeah. That's, that's what I think. And there's definitely um, alleged substances that can 
expedite that synchronicity. <laughs> now we're getting really getting to Joe Rogan territory. <laughs> we are doing a podcast after all. That's, yeah. <laughs> but it's true. Oh my lord! Yeah, I mean, talk about geometry, mm. sacred geometry, sacred, uh, the sacred feminine. Just these ideas of duality. Um, yeah, just balance, universal. Uh, it's truth. the substrata of everything, the building blocks. Well, for the longest time, I, I hadn't really. I had. It's almost like the same way I feel felt about Hollywood when I was a kid. I was like, okay, well, this is all just lighting and camera angles and camera tricks and green screen and all that. Um, but when I look at it on as a movie, it it feels real. Uh, but I have my suspicions, and then you know you grow up and you learn how the cameras work and this and that and then you move to Hollywood and then you're working in production and uh you're like oh yeah I was right like this this is pretty much how I thought it was um I think that's a good analogy for kind of this like (laughs) simulation theory life in general uh strange reality yeah yeah and just like coincidences just continuing to happen does it feel weird talking about it like that in such a matter-of-fact way at this I, at this point, I don't know if I I'm I, I've just accepted a lot I've accepted it for sure, yeah yeah because I think things change when you do. Mm-hmm. You agree? Yeah, definitely. How yeah. how so for you? Do you have any examples? Um, it'll probably take a very long time to explain. I think I've just accepted a lot of recent things yeah. in life, in the AI realm, in the life realm, music existence death Hmm. i'm just kind of here for now (laughs) Mm -hmm. trying to make things yeah amen yeah (laughs) the end (laughs) that's a good place to stop yeah sweet great thank you for that thank you that was cool Thank you to Poppy and Titanic for that. The latest single and video for I Disagree, which is the title track for the forthcoming album, are online now. The album itself is due at the start of next year on Sumerian Records. You can pre-order that now. You can find Poppy online at all the usual spots. On YouTube, just go and search Poppy. Uh, on Instagram, she's at I'm Poppy. Titanic is at Titanic Sinclair on all platforms. I'm at Daniel P. Carter. The podcast is at Swim Podcast. That covers pretty much everything. Write a nice review on iTunes because that would be wonderful. Until next